All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with more Cyberpunk 2077. Hopefully things will work from this point on, at least for the next 20 to 40 minutes. Um, the game crashed right about at this point. It was just after the cutscene, but we, we reloaded a save and got back here and skipped the, uh, the cutscene. And it seems to be doing okay. At least it has been for the first few seconds, so fingers crossed. Here we go. Public calling with the pendejos a kidnapper. Hey, senors, open, all right? Speaking of which, I got you a little something. Militech training shot, in case you need to uh, brush up on your dance moves. Down for some target practice in VR? Not now, Jack. Uh, no time. Maybe later. Sure, sure. Manana, manana. Fix will give you any tips for this job. No, I'm not your mother. Just do what you pay for. It's easy work. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Entering Japan Town. Konnichiwa. Again, on medium settings, this looks pretty damn good. I gotta say. It's all about the texture quality, man. Brain dance. <laughs> Target Sandra Dorset. Target's Biomon went mute a couple of hours back. Target could have possibly flatlined already. Not sure you're in time. We're in time, bug. Sure, you're on phones, but that don't make you any less a part of the squad. Squad. Charming. Bug, you could at least try to be nice. Damn, what are his eyes doing? What the fuck? You aren't nice. Supportive. Call a therapist, you little... Nancy. Whoa. Thrown hands here. I set weapon to. What did I set it to? Fuck. Uh, what is alt here? Oh, whatever. Oh, okay, yeah, I was right. Okay. Sorry, guys, still getting the hang of the controls. I've never played this game before. Make moves. But I need to get my vendor, my vendor on. Spunky monkey, that's my favorite flavor. Looking for 1237. Target should be inside, but I've got zero eyes on her biomon. Fingers crossed it's not too late. Ugh, I hate this life of death shit. Hurry. Got a nice poor librarian chick over there. We're freaking her out. Just pissing her pants. Poor thing. Oh my god, it's room 237 from The Shining, guys. It's the moon room, which is a palindrome. All right, are we going to breach or what? Connection status. Oh, hack the door. Okay. How do we do that? Can I hack it with my gun? I'm t I'm trying to do something. What's going on with this door? Is it this door? I What's going on, bro? How do I hack the door? What the fuck? My key binding's fucked up. What's going on? Oh Christ. Uh, whoa. Information overload, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do that, but my key bindings are not working. Okay. Uh, cyberware systems. Scan? Crafting? Okay. 
Okay. Uh... Ah, okay, we've got to go into scanning mode, I see. I can see the matrix. Everything's actually code. This reality is a holographic simulation. Nothing we do here matters. Fascinating. Okay. All right. Ah, okay. Cool. What can we steal from here? That's my first thought, of course. Scrounging around like a little rat. Oh, we got some fermented pizza. That's a delicacy in the future. This guy's got a fucking burger and hot dog machine in his house. This guy's a this guy's a pro gamer, he must be. God damn, he's got a second one here. He's got two walks going. Holy shit. This guy must be a streamer or something. Okay. Oh, shit. Looks like she tried to transition, but it didn't quite work out. Sandra Dorset's protected under Echelon 2 Corporal Immunity. Our girl's top shelf. Is this too hot for YouTube? You can show gore, but not a nipple on a female. That's very cyberpunk indeed. Let's read this. How did it happen? When and why did we as society decide that human life is a commodity, a luxury? We decided it about 70 years ago. Um, after the Second World War is about when we decided that, my, my dear. My mother passed away at 45. She still had decades of life to live until it was all stolen from her by common pneumonia. If she had even held the cheapest trauma team policy, she could have been cured within an hour. Why couldn't you just get a black market cure? If, if it's an ANCAP paradise, chances are uh, you could have just given her vitamin C or some shit anyways. This fucking... You know what? You're an idiot. Actually, that's not true. Pneumonia's really serious. You can... You can die from it. I had a, a friend of a friend actually um, pass away from that, and that's not a joke. Um, I don't want to get specific about it, but you uh, if you catch it in the hospital, it's particularly bad. It, it can actually kill you. Sorry to get serious, but, uh, you know, it's true. Uh, but uh, again, it says this is 2077, so you would think that pneumonia would have been solved at this point. You know, the puzzle of pneumonia would be like the puzzle of polio. It's like, well, we've probably solved it at this point. If we can if we can fuck with the human immune system enough to put cyber augments in our in our brains and on our face, in our eye sockets and everything, we haven't cured pneumonia? Are you fucking kidding? Like invent a new exotic disease. Don't use pneumonia. That's like say that's like saying she died of polio at this point. The idea of privatized healthcare is deeply ingrained in our public psyche. Already in 2020, there was widespread consensus that 500 euro dollars a month was a fair price for trauma team insurance. Health wasn't something you were given. It was something you earned. The private system may not be perfect, but there's no alternative, we thought. Bullshit! All caps! Now across the Pacific Ocean to the USSR. What the fuck is this pro-communist shit in here? If only the U.S. had been communist, then everything would have been solved. This is pathetic. Fuck this bullshit. Jesus Christ. This really is a dystopia. If people, if people hold these opinions in 2077, my God. I mean, maybe that's just a reflection of how bad history uh, education is. It's like, read a fucking book. Eyes open, bandejo sahed. Drop him quiet, V. Can I loot him? Oh shit, did I alert the attention of other people? Scarf's still crawling, clean it up. Don't want bringing back the target under fire. Whoa. It's the clown brigade. Why can I not loot the body? Fuck. I'm gonna take your gun. 
Can we hide the body like Hitman? That's crazy, you can fucking... Can I drop this fucker? Where's he gonna go? Okay. Shh, go to sleep, go to sleep. Open the freezer? I thought there was a chick in the freezer. I've seen this intro sequence or this uh, this first quest a bunch of times because I watched reviews of this game when it first came out. Uh, okay. Why can I not loot the body? I guess they just don't drop shit or they don't have anything. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna take everything. Fuck yeah. What's this? Cyberware usage and its side effects. Ooh. Hmm. Many people believe we live in a time when impossible has become an obsolete term. Reprodox can replace nearly any part of the human body with artificial implants from your big toe to your penis. My years in trauma team in Vietnam taught me the impossible is still very much possible. Even now, as we enter the twilight of the 21st century, we as medical professionals have not been able to eliminate all the side effects that come from incorporating cybernetic elements into our anuses. Of course, everyone's familiar with the mental disorder, most commonly referred to as cyberpsychosis. It doesn't end there. Although advances in medical science for the greater part of a century have reduced its incidence to a minimum, cyberware rejection can still occur in a small subset of the population. Okay, so the immune system rejects, yep, psychological effects. Depression, apathy, hallucinations, and increases in attitude. Okay, that's like, we're already, we, we are already there, man. In 2023, we've already got number two here. Implant over, we've also got number three already. I mean, using a tool to alter another tool is the beginning of artificial intelligence. That's a quote from a favorite author of mine. Meaning when you use a piece of flint to shape another piece of flint into a knife or a spear point, you're already... You're, you're already on the path to hell. If you think AI and all this shit that we're in the very early hype bullshit stages of right now, if you think that's a path to hell, congratulations. You've recognized something that began in the Neolithic. Good for you. Um, eyeglasses are a cybernetic implant. If you take drugs of any kind, if you take vitamin supplements, that's a type of cybernetic implant. If you brush your teeth, okay? The term cybernetic uh, has a wider application that I think is valid. And this game makes me think about this shit. Uh, there's, a, there's a philosophical... Um, there's a whole... There, there's multiple schools of, of um, philosophical thinking that, that look at... Um, what what tool use has done to us as human beings and again using a tool to alter another tool is the beginning of artificial intelligence i think that's true um i can't find fault with that that aphorism or that assertion i think that uh, as soon as you start to refine your tools what you're doing is you're giving a tool the role that you would have played in terms of like creating a tool like as soon as you use a tool to alter another tool what you're doing is you're saying I need this tool to make another tool I need to augment my abilities as a being in order to better refine an object so you're relying on a tool in order to create another tool. And what that means is the tool you're using to refine the other tool, you're making that tool a part of yourself. You're, in a sense, augmenting yourself already in the Neolithic with a piece of flint. You're already changing the abilities of your body, the capabilities of your, your ape host, because, of course, we're all... Uh, alien parasites that infected the brains of primates uh, about three million years ago, causing those primates to crave more protein um, because the parasites that we are uh, emerged in fruit 
That's where the fable about the apple comes from in Christian theology. Um, monkeys ate fruit with weird alien worms in it that probably landed here on meteorites or evolved on Earth. It doesn't really matter. Um, the other interpretation is that language is a kind of parasite uh, or worm that infected the brain. It's a pattern. And where did that come from? Well, some people think it was a signal from space. Other people think it was natural evolution, pattern recognition causing us to fixate on certain shapes in nature and then create runes and symbols based on those shapes. For example, the way that twigs diverge from a tree branch. If you look at uh, Futhark runes, they often look like tree branches. So whether it was our ape brains evolving naturally or whether there was some external thing that influenced them, it doesn't really matter doesn't even matter if it's a metaphorical thing. What matters is that at a certain point in the uh, evolution of certain primates, our brains changed in order to uh, feed whatever the parasite is. Again, whatever, however you interpret that, there was some kind of parasite. I like the word symbiote better because parasite is a bit judgmental. It's a bit creepy. Uh, I like to think of whatever it is as a symbiote. And uh, I think that uh, whatever it was infected our brains and caused us to crave protein way more than we used to. So apes in nature eat insects and they eat plants, but they mostly eat vegetation. They don't eat a lot of protein. Um, whatever caused us to evolve uh, wanted us to eat more protein. And if you look at... Um, uh, other types of um, parasite and fungal infections in, in insects and animals in the animal kingdom, the parasite will change the behavior of its host in order to feed itself or to, re or to reproduce. Language does this by making us reproduce it. So if you're a writer or a programmer or an architect or whatever, you are perpetuating patterns that you have... Um, become enamored with in your life. If you're a painter and you like to paint things with blue and green, you're going to perpetuate that uh, set of colors because of some natural inclination. So in a sense, what you're doing is you are reproducing for something else. You're not having children, maybe you are, but in addition to doing so, if you do that, you are also perpetuating whatever your pattern of choice is, whatever your craft, your obsession, your job, whatever it is, you are reproducing that behavior and perpetuating those patterns. And that's what the metaphorical interpretation of the sort of symbiote brain thing is. Uh, the literal interpretation is monkeys ate fruit that had worms in it. The worms killed a lot of those monkeys, but the ones they didn't kill uh, the immune system and the brain of those early primates uh, adapted to include the symbiote in the function of that early primate's body. And that symbiote urged its host to eat more protein, to start to eat more insects, to cannibalize other apes, which is why there's still cannibalism in ape species today. Uh, there's cannibalism in lots of animals, but the way that um, the way that it's practiced in primates is what I'm talking about specifically. So, this is all my schizo nonsense theory, by the way. So don't pay any attention to it; it's all bullshit. But anyway, uh, the the way that apes started to behave once they were infected with whatever it was, whether it was language or a literal biological thing. Um, it caused them to eat more protein, it caused them to hunt animals, it caused them to make tools to make the hunting of animals easier. That leads to us. That leads to AI. So the genesis of all this is way far back if you believe in any of this esoteric, occult, schizoid shit. Um, which I find fascinating. I don't allow myself to actually believe it, but I do enjoy thinking about it. I do enjoy entertaining it so to speak. Um, if you, if you want to know my, what my personal cosmology is, it's something like that. Um, and again, there's different flavors of it, there's different interpretations, but this type of 
content, this type of AI shit, always makes me think about this because I'm inclined to go like, well, where did this start? Well, it started with monkeys evolving or uh, primate ancestors, whatever you want to call them. However that happened, uh, it happened a, a long time before this. Like, there's people who are so romantic about, you know, being Luddites that they're like, oh, we shouldn't make AI. We've been making it for three million years, you moron. It's, it's like, oh, we should stop now. Should we? Really? You think, you think that's even possible? Like, maybe we are going to hell. If that's true, it's not like, you know, oh, if we stop now, we can, we can stop it. It's like, no, dude. It, it started thousands of generations ago. Like, you're not going to, you know, bo boycotting a corporation that makes AI is not going to do shit. <laughs> like, if you think we're fucked because of that, we're fucked. If not, grab on and enjoy the ride because obviously this is something that's been going on for a while, at least to my madman brain. And, uh, you know, th there's no reason to, uh, to be frightened because if you enjoy being conscious, uh, because consciousness, I think, is actually your awareness that you are not the body you inhabit. You are the symbiote. You are the host. That's why we have a self. That's why we have consciousness. That's why we're not unconsciously running around in the trees. Because we are not the bodies we inhabit. We are the symbiotes. We are the parasites. We are the aliens. We are language. We are the word of God, if that's your preferred metaphor. Whatever the fuck. Um, that's what you are. And unfortunately, recognizing this and actually accepting it drives most people insane because we haven't figured out a way to explain it that most people find palatable. We've tried a million different metaphorical ways, we've tried symbolic ways over the past several hundred years. The people who get it inherently usually go nuts. The ones who don't get it are the NPCs who just live their lives. Um, and there's, again, there's a whole spectrum. Like, there's people who have a sense that they know that there's something special, um, but they don't have a way of describing it to themselves using any sort of language. And it doesn't have to be written language. You can be a sculptor and start sculpting, I don't know, Egyptian uh, busts that have snake worm uh, crowns and you'll notice the snake is right where the pineal gland is. And maybe you're just inclined to sculpt that. It's because you're trying to tell yourself what you are. Because there's a part of you that knows this. You know? This is probably the craziest monologue I've ever gone into on this channel. I understand how insane this sounds. Don't, don't, um, don't think I don't know how crazy I sound right now. Um, I'm not so far gone as to be um, unaware of that. But again, a game like this, which is so um, deeply invested in this narrative about AI and about modifying the body, it's those two topics together that make me think about this shit and want to talk about it and go off on these insane tangents. So if you don't like it, don't watch the videos. Um, you know, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to say. And if it's too early to say it, you know, I'll, uh, I'll deal with the consequences of that. Anyway, let's go find the frozen corpse for this quest. Let's stop, uh, stop ourselves from rambling any longer. Whoa! It's like a Zelda notification sound. What the fuck? Shit, my health. Fuck. How do I use a thing? I forgot my keybinds, guys. I was too busy talking about esoteric wisdom. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Where is my consumable thing? Okay, it's X. The fuck is my... <sighs> I'm alt-tabbing out, but you can't see it. What did I map that to on my Logitech G13? What is X? Use consumable... Oh, it's okay. It's the... 
It's okay, guys. I took a hit of nicotine. I'm fine. I'm fine. The schizo thoughts are receding. Nicotine is good for that. That's why I do it. We got some fucking Gears of War cover shooting going on here. Whoa. Is that actually healing me or is that not doing anything? I thought I had food on me. I thought I picked up a bunch of food. Trying to save ammo here. I don't know how much ammo I have for this fucking thing. This guy's got a fucking minigun. Whoa! You shan't kill me, sirs. I'm cyberpunk. Looks like your mutilated arm didn't serve you any advantage in this fight. Is there somebody in here? Okay. Check your corners! Check your corners! You just die. Holy shit. Is the inhaler like a temporary heal, or does it actually heal you? I'm not clear on that. Anyway, whatever. Uh, okay, we don't have to hide these bodies. I keep thinking about, like, um, the Hitman mechanic where you have to hide bodies. Just being able to pick people up is uh, making me think I have to. Ooh. Got an automatic weapon. Very cool. Let's loot whatever this chest is here. Again, I gotta say, the graphics are pretty nice in this. This game's already a couple years old. It looks better than a lot of games that come out... Um, have come out since. Man, I just want to eat one of those burgers right now. God damn. Ah, yes, the Chinese statue. We can sell it to Chinese people. Got a nice square toilet there. worth looking into here. Ah. Oh, we got some more lore. Let's check this out. The Pain Editor. God damn. If you've never read Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, read that book. There's a whole passage at the beginning about people like modulating their emotions to interact with each other. But there's such a meta um, element to it. Like it's become so commonplace as a practice that people are like, well, do you want me to be angry? Like, just for fun, because we've forgotten what anger is like, that type of thing. I feel like we're already there. Again, a lot of the stuff that these authors were talking about in the 80s, and a lot of the stuff in this game that's supposed to be 50 years from now, it's already happening now. Like the, It's just like the fucking uh, flint-napping Neolithic tool use thing. It's like, this shit is always, I hate to use this phrase, but it's always already been happening. That's a very... Uh, a chic phrase in humanities departments and academia. People say people use the phrase "always already." It's kind of a um, it's a way of saying that things have are always been this way. Um, it's a fancy way of saying that. Okay, reduces pain. See, that's something you don't want because then if you burn your hand on the stove or whatever, you're not going to notice. You need a little bit of pain. Pain is Pain is an indication that your your spacesuit, aka your body, has a leak or is being damaged. That'd be like, you know, oh, I don't want airbags in my car. You know, it's fucking retarded. People thinking, oh, we should. I wish I could never feel pain. Do you? You don't, you don't want to know if you've been stabbed. You don't want to know if someone's stealthily injected you with something at a nightclub. You don't want to know if you you injured your pinky finger and you need to get it set so that it your bones heal correctly? You don't want to know that? I don't want to know. I want to be unaware. I want to be an idiot. Because being smart is hard. Being smart means I suffer. So I'd rather be stupid. Okay, you'll be stupid then, and you'll be fucking left behind, man. That... God damn. This game, man. I shouldn't play this. This type of shit, it, it, it tickles my philosophy bone in my brain. Um... Too much, and it makes me uh, makes me go off on tangents. 
Especially when good wine is involved. Ooh, we got some nades. Okay. We got more lore here. Holy shit. Oh, I didn't read it. Well, I shouldn't anyway. I've done enough ranting. Okay, we got some kind of shotgun or something here. What's this guy? Can we... Are you not dead? Well, now you are. Uh, ooh. Oh, the nicest view. The girl doing a lesbian go down on her girlfriend gesture. I would love to walk out of my apartment in the morning and look at that. I'd rather blow my brains out of my skull. I'd rather paint that billboard with my brains than have to look at it every day. I'd rather climb in this super-cooled magnet and then, I don't know, have it, have it pass a current through it and have it rip all my augments out of my skull. I'd rather do that. Christ. I think on that happy note, we're actually going to end the episode here, guys. I kind of went off on a, on a rant and uh, I think I lengthened this more than I intended to, so... That's just how, you know, it's just how it goes with this game. If, if, uh, if I'm going to play this, there's probably going to be some tangents like that. There's going to be some schizoid nonsense infiltrating things. But you know what? We roll with it. We go with it. And uh, we say what we say, and we do what we do. Um, I am enjoying this game, though. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I, I would. And I've only, you know, done a few... Uh, I've only done a few murders, the first of many. So we're going to have more fun, I think. But with that said, in, uh, in our Blade Runner apartment here, we're going to bid you guys adieu. And uh, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed some part of this. And uh, as always, uh, stay happy, stay healthy. Do what you need to do, but be measured, exercise some modicum of restraint, some modicum of, um, of uh, moderation, and pay attention to your health. That shit's more important than anything else. Um, if you're not healthy, all your other goals will turn to uh, ashes in your mouth, so to speak. Anyway, love you guys, and peace out.